football gloves to men are one of the most sacred things that they'll have in their life. A lot of them will keep them their whole lives. The only other thing that they try to keep that long sometimes is their underwear. We are a part of a industry of about 80 different brands of ball gloves, but we're the only company that has our own factory and we're the only factory in the United States. This is, oh, give me a home where the buffalo roam. We've been using it about 20 years now kind of a spongy type of a leather. This is kangaroo, this is kangaroo. When we make a glove out of kangaroo, for the most part, we're gonna make half of it out of kangaroo and half of it out of cowhide. The problem with kangaroo is that it is not very thick, so it doesn't have a lot of body to it. It kinda is floppy. The tensile strength is two to three times stronger than cowhide. This is one of our cookie cutters right here. This is the poem, which is always the largest part that we cut. We do have dies going back to the 30s. Each glove that we make usually has about three different pieces of embroidery on it. And we can put your name on a glove, we can put logos on a glove. Nolan Ryan's first glove was a Nakona, so he's always kind of had a soft spot for us. And after their two World Series years, one of those Christmases, he decided he wanted to give a Nakona ball glove to every employee of the Rangers. That was 320 people. And it had the Rangers name on the index finger. It had the Rangers logo on the thumb. And then on every thumb was every employee's name individually stitched out. What she's doing now is taking that lining palm. And you can see there's that handcrafted Nakona, Texas. She's gonna sew this onto this. Here's the palm of the glove. She's gonna sew this on here in such a way that everything's gonna be inside out. She's gonna start adding a welt line right there and go up and down and up and down, finishing the whole perimeter of those fingers. This is the hardest job in the factory. Martin's job is to turn the glove inside out. This one is a half kangaroo, half cowhide model, so it is not as difficult as some of the models are. Now he goes back to the hot fingers because he wants to stretch that leather out. Start to resemble a glove, and a lot of people will say, well, all there is to making a ball glove is just lacing some leather together. There's about 60 holes in that one die, okay? They have to be matched up with all these holes on the back. Cosmoline is a lot of wax and a little bit of mineral oil. It's a very sticky substance, but what we use it for is a stickle. Now you'd say, well, why don't you just use glue? We want this area in here to be very sticky because we want that palm to want to stay touching that. Now we could put glue in there, but after a while it would dry out. And as you're bending the glove, it would finally break loose. She's working on and repairing gloves. Now you will find people around the country that will work on gloves but you don't find factories that work on gloves. So we're the only factory in the world where if you have an Nakona glove and something goes wrong with it, you can send it back to us and we can fix it. Try that with your Rollins glove. Say, yeah, uh, could you send that back over to Guangdong, China? In some cases, we've had gloves come back to us over a 30 year period, three or four times. And in some cases, those gloves don't have an original part left to them when they go out the door after that third time except for one thing, they may still have grandpa's memories in them, or dad's. Well, the next things that we do, and you'll see this a lot, you probably even do it, you ever do that? We're gonna try to work out the wrinkles in here because a wrinkle might cause an error, and you can't have that, so people are always doing that. Well, now, we got a guy named Vito. For years, the way we would do that, we would take one of these what we call a glove mallet, and you just kind of lightly tap on the leather. You were asking how to break it in, just lightly. My granddad, he was faced with, do we go to Japan like all of our competitors and tell all of our people in the United States to go home just because that's what everybody else was doing? And he said no. His favorite saying was, if I've got to tell everybody to go home and go to Japan, then I'm gonna take a bucket of worms and just go fishing. I'm not gonna do it. I saw this today and I thought this is, we've got to get a picture of this because we've got one customer over in Taiwan. His name is Hammer Sue. And Hammer buys a lot of gloves from us. They wanted the Taiwanese flag there. And so my granddad would be thrilled about this knowing that we had finally got some going back the other way. Pretty soon we're gonna have a, a, what's called a custom glove builder. 
So that will allow the, as you make the choices, you see the glove appear on the screen there. And and I'm afraid when that happens, we're going to be making a bunch of them. <laughs> Seems like the people that buy Nakona tend to, I don't know, hold that just a little bit more special to them. The fact that they've got an American made glove and that's their first experience in baseball or softball. It doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy. It's always seems like a good experience for them. Our company, when we made wallets and purses, we were no Kona leather goods, N-O-C-O-N-A. But when my granddad made that first ball glove, he wanted to put the company name on the glove. So he sent a letter to the U.S. Trademark Office in Washington, D.C., and he said, I'd like to trademark N-O-C-O-N-A. Well, they sent a nice letter back to him, and they said, you can't because there's an incorporated city in Texas with that name already. He quickly said, we're going to change it to a K and tell everybody that's how the Indians spelled it, okay? Now, our name is a Nakona, Nakona is a Comanche Indian name. Peta Nakona, P-E-T-A, was born in 1820, either out in the Paladora Canyon area or up in Indian territory. Do you know where that's at? That's what they used to call Oklahoma.